Hey, Mr. C. Oh, just a touch, Mrs. B. Getting a bit tricky, isn't it, Mr. C? If you ask me, well, I... I'm not asking you, girl. This is something only a man can understand. Quite right, Mr. C. Huh? Forward, as he. She'll be wearing striped socks next. You keep quiet, girl, and get on with your work. And let Mr. C get on with his deliberations. Keep some more fresh. Thank you, Mrs. B. Well, Mr. C? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. There are too many imponderables. Imponderables? Oh, you do have some lovely words, Mr. C. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we heard some last night when he chipped over the cat. You keep quiet, madam, or you'll get that cucumber round your lug hole. Now then, Mr. C, put us out of our misery. What do you think ought to be done? Well, taking one thing with another, considering every aspect and weighing up all the factors involved... I think we should skip the first two races and go for Captain Dick in the first. But what about the war? War? What war? You know, the Kaiser and the German army and all that. Everyone says there's going to be a war. Everyone? Well, Albert the Butcher's boy. <laughs> Silly girl. You want to forget about Albert and listen to your elders and betters. Mr. C has got it up here. <laughs> that ain't where Albert's got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dreadfully sorry. I thought you were Lily. Oh, I would have had her that time, too, I bet. Oh, oh. <laughs> I've been practicing little short jumps all the morning. <laughs> ah, the morning paper. Thank you, Clodson. Uh, ah, yes. No doubt about it. Uh, there's going to be a war, all right. I have it on the highest authority. From the chief of the general staff? No, from Albert, the butcher's boy. The <laughs> times concert. Kaiser Wilhelm reviews the troops. German army maneuvers on the Belgian border. Oh, but surely they wouldn't dare, sir. They must know what would happen once the British lion gets his tail up. Ah, uh, you mark my words, Clotson. There's nothing the Kaiser would like better than to get his hand on a bit of British tail. <laughs> But we'll be ready for them, eh? Yes, I'll get in touch with the war office and see what they can offer me. A splendid idea, sir. Why don't you call them right away on the telephonic communicator? Ah, yeah. <coughs> there you go. Hello, war office. Sir Henry Belgian Blackman. Uh, oh. Hello there, war office. No. Sir Henry Belgian. Hello there, no. war office. No. Sir, Henry. <laughs> Sir Henry Belgian Plunger. What do you mean, number, please? I haven't got a number. I'm a major general, not a dash comic. War office? Well, that hasn't got a number either, has it? It's that big building on the right as you go down Whitehall. Two tin soldiers outside and a pile of horse manure on the pavement. No, oh, I can't be bothered. I'll send them a postcard. Damn stupid invention, that Clodson. <laughs> It'll never take the place of the cleft stick. <laughs> well, I shall just go round to the war office and offer my services. Lay out my dress uniform, will you, Clodson? And get the footman to sharpen my spurs. We don't have a footman anymore, sir. They don't last very long since Miss Virginia has insisted on giving them night classes. <laughs> Claims she was improving their minds. Be that as it may, there wasn't one of them could lift a scuttle of coal the next morning. <laughs> yes, nuisance, Clodson. Well, get another footman, will you? I can't go to war with blunt spurs. Very good, sir. Uh. Equal rights for women. All men are swines. Down with the trousered tyrants. Good morning, Daddy. Good morning, Clodson. Good morning, Miss Virginia. What the place is Sorry, Daddy, haven't time to explain. Just popped in to tell Clodson I borrowed Tina the Tweeny for a while. Uh, yes, Miss Virginia. Now, you behave yourself, do you hear? Yes, Mr. Clodson. We don't want any trouble. No, Mr. Clodson. And make sure you're back in time to scrub those floors before dinner. Yes, Mr. Clodson. Now, listen here, Michael. Don't stop, Daddy. We've got a terribly busy day ahead. Just popping over to Buckingham Palace, where I shall make the supreme gesture. You mean? Yes. I shall chain Teeny to the railings. But, Mr. Teeny. Enough forward, Teeny. <laughs> That's not a bit like Virginia. Aye, but maybe now we can safely advertise for another footman. Down with trousers, up with skirts. Ah, that's more like it. She hasn't changed a bit, you know. <laughs> now then, 
Let's see, we'll put four bags in the pantry for the general and the rest can go into my private stock. But that's all, dear Mrs. Bridges. The paper says it wasn't patriotic to do all, dear. Bless you, girl, that ain't all, dear. We's merely looking after our substance, like it says in the good book. Ain't you never heard of the white virgins? Not in this house. <laughs> <laughs> it was dreadful, Peter. Waist deep in mud. Those damn guns bang, bang, banging away. The screams of the horses, the groans of the men. The filth, the degradation, the suffering. I tell you, Peter, to my dying day, I shall never forget those three days of manoeuvres on Salisbury Plain. <laughs> I know. I know, my boy, war is hell. But remember, you are a Belgian plunger. And now that I have this key position on the general staff... It came through, then? Well, uh, as it came through. And from today, I'm general officer in charge of bootlaces and parties. Is that good? Good? It's absolutely vital, my dear boy. <laughs> As Napoleon said, an army marches on its bootlaces. I wouldn't be at all surprised they don't give me a knighthood. But you've already got a knighthood. Have I? <laughs> Forgive the intrusion, sir. I thought you would like to interview the new footman. Oh, good idea, Clarsen, yes. Wheel him in. Good morning, Herr General. Footsman first class Otto Klinger for duty reporting and at your service himself is blazing. Uh, Klinger? Klinger? Otto Klinger? You're not some kind of dashed Bosch, Heil. Ach, Gott in Himmel, nein, Your Excellency. I am in Switzerland geboren. From where is coming the big cheese and the clocks go. But I am now since long time in England living. Indeed, I am out taking my citizen papers and getting myself neutralized. Oh, you poor man, was it painful? I think he means naturalized, miss. Thank heavens, this dreadful war has deprived us of so much already. Yeah, but I am now trolly fine English working chap, Koblimi. Oh. Play up, tip them hot spots, God straff the king. Oh, well, that's yes, good. I thought for one moment that you were one of those damn German spies, you know. Because I couldn't have you here, you see, if you were uh, one of those German spies. You're not, are you? Ah, nicht me, Your Excellency. You have my word as an English gentle bloke. Ah, good, good, good. Yeah. Because I have this very important and highly secret post in the war cabinet, you know. I'm in charge of bootlaces and parties. Bootlaces and parties. What are you writing it down for? I am studying to English my improve. Oh, excellent. I find that highly satisfactory. You're hired. Thank you. Uh, I think that's someone at the front door, sir. If the Herr General will permit. A good man, that Clubson. I say, do you think he can sharpen spurs? I think he'll do anything to oblige. Anything? <laughs> Your Excellence, Madame la Vicomtesse de la Zizi Pompop. Hello, Baldy. Uh, Lottie, Lottie, little Lottie Lovell. How you been, you randy old goat? Uh, How about a nice cup of Rosie Lee? There's also Rosie Lee. She means tea. Yes, that's right. Hot and strong, the way I like everything. <laughs> Very well, madam. Sit down. Well, Lottie, what have you been up to? since you ran off with my footman, Starkers. Well, now, let me see. Uh, well, there was this Bedouin chief in Morocco. Uh, Mind you, Bulgy, I don't recommend the Sahara life ducks. Uh, that sand gets everywhere. <laughs> and then, a couple of weeks ago, I thought I had it made. I got this royal geezer lined up. Yes, he was married, mind you, but promised me he'd get a divorce. Swore it with his hand on his coronet, he did. Lottie said, you and me are going to get hitched the minute I get back from Sarah Jaliva. As sure as my name is Archduke Ferdinand. But I waited for him in Paris, and he didn't turn up. Don't you read the newspapers? Archduke Ferdinand was shot in the Balkans. God help us. Just swell he didn't turn up. I do like a man with all these faculties. Oh, I see. So now you've come back to me. 
Well, who else would I come back in my hour of need but back to my fiancé? 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 You have a fiancé? Yes, you, silly. Me? Yes. Don't you remember? When I was here three years ago, you proposed to me and I accepted. Yeah, but dash it all, Lottie. You did run off with the footman and you've married three other chaps since then. Well, a girl's got to do something to pass the time. But the fact still remains we never formally broke off our engagement. So, what do you say? <laughs> oh, my Lottie! Oh, Oh, my God! Bootlaces. There is a spare pair in the left-hand drawer of your dressing table, sir. Uh, well, that'll do for a start. And it still leaves me a bit short. How many pairs do you need, sir? Fifty million. Cobblers. <laughs> Don't be impertinent, man. No, I meant that I would have to send Lily around all the cobblers in the neighborhood. Oh, no, no time for that, Clotson. It'll take days, is it? The, um, <clears throat> the British Expeditionary Force leaves for France tomorrow. Two hundred and fifty thousand men, Clotson. The old contemptibles that Kaiser calls them. <laughs> but we'll show him, eh? If only we can get hold of 50 million pairs of bootlaces. 50 million pairs of bootlaces for 250,000 men sounds a little excessive, sir. Well, cousin, if they look sloppy, they'll fight sloppy. Uh, my plan is that each man shall carry 200 spare pairs of bootlaces in his knapsack. <laughs> it's little details like this that could win the war for us, cousin. If only we can get hold of the bootlaces. Well, I may be able to assist you, sir, if you will allow me a little time to make inquiries. Ah, uh, good man, Gosden. Uh, and uh, send up young Lily with the uh, tea, will you? Very good, sir. Uh, top secret. I'll guard you with my life. <laughs> March, try to trip me up with you, you boss swine. Right, take that. Ah. <laughs> Be a bit more careful where you stick that thing. Willie, why aren't you off to France with the old contemptibles? Ah, yes, well, I thought I'd stay here with the young contemptibles. <sighs> sort of talk is this for a serving officer? You should have thought of this, my lad, when I bought your commission for you four years ago. I say, you wouldn't like to buy it back, would you? You can have it for half price. <laughs> anyway, nobody said anything about fighting. I mean, I didn't mind the army in peacetime. It was all balls. Eh? And banquets and parties and going up with devs and all that. Then someone goes and starts a jolly old war and spoils it all. It's not fair. Rejoin your regiment this instant, sir, or I'll cut you off without a shilling. All right, Peter, you win. But I warn you, if I get killed in battle, I, I shall never speak to you again. <laughs> Bootlasers und Bottis. Hello. Gott in Himmel. No, it's Lily. Oh, look, pigeons. The pigeons? What pigeons? We are pigeons. Who's pigeons? Oh, no, silly. In that basket. For the one that says, made in Berlin. Oh, those pigeons, ah. Well, well, yeah. It's my hobby. <laughs> yeah. Come, Fritz, Eden. Thank you, Bootlasers. What are you doing with that piece of paper? It's very clean pigeon. Does not want to make notice. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Got you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you were Lily. No, Herr General. It's me, the footsman, Klinger. <laughs> well, I really did it, Dr. Klinger, then, didn't I? <laughs> oh, the tea. Good lad. Put it down over there, will you? Yeah, Herr General. <laughs> Top secret. Oh, 
Oh, there it is. I was wondering where I put it. Good man, Klinger. I wouldn't want this to get into the wrong hands, you know, eh? But all right, run along, man. Yes, here, General. I say, pay for the most dreadful bad luck. I'm afraid I've broken my jolly old arm, so I can't go off to war tomorrow. Oh, oh you poor boy. Have a cup of tea. Oh, thank you, Peter. <laughs> you insolent young pup. Get off to war this instant, or I'll have your pips on toast for breakfast. Oh, belly button. Oh, and when I was his age, I was much older. Oh, hello, Bulgy. Oh, Lottie, come and sit on my knee and tell me what a good girl you've been. Now, you behave yourself. I'm a respectable, engaged lady. So when are we going to get married, eh? No, I think we ought to wait a bit. After all, they say these wartime marriages never last. And besides, I'm so busy with my war work. What war work? Well, helping poor soldiers in trouble. I've got one outside now. Jerk! <laughs> What's wrong with him? He's got his spawn in a twist. I'll just take him upstairs and straighten it out. See you later, love. Oh, good luck, Please, uh, I suppose somebody's got to do it. Brave fellows, these jocks. Uh, spawn in a twist. Must be awfully painful then. Still, Lottie's a good girl. <laughs> She'll handle it. <laughs> Lottie. <laughs> It's a picture postcard I am sending to my mother. Why is it marked top secret? I don't want the postman to read it. <laughs> Excuse me. Funny man, that. Funny is as funny does. What does that mean, Mrs. B? I don't know, Mr. C. I wasn't listening. <laughs> Come on, sir. Gunther, geh unter den Lindenstraße. Sorry, I thought you were Lily. Why, I'm Lily, sir. Eh? Oh, this dreadful war going on for so long. <laughs> oh, dear. Are you all right, sir? Eh? Oh. <laughs> oh <my little girl. laughs> Thank you, sir. Such <laughs> <laughs> a good thing, child. <laughs> She's a lovely girl. I know. I'll get her when she comes back for the tray. <laughs> I swore I poured myself a cup there. <laughs> I'm losing my faculties. I really have to... Oh, now I dropped the knife! Oh, 
cage. Was there any jam? <laughs> Been off fighting months ago. Ah, yes. Well, you see, I lost my travel warrant, and I thought it might be in here. And is it? I don't know. I haven't looked yet. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Willie. Any luck with your travel warrant yet? Yes. I still haven't found it. <laughs> oh, this is all too much for me. I would have hoped that at least one of my family would have been out at the front. Well, now you can't mention it. Oh, hello, Bulgy. Oh, Virginia, I know you're a bulging plunger, but that's taking the family name a bit too far. In wartime, we must increase our productivity. Who said that, Lloyd George? No, Albert the butcher's boy. <laughs> Get off to the war this instant. Right ho, Peter, just as soon as I finish blankering my tennis. Off you go. Oh, lotty, little lotty. Oh, come behind the city and make an old man very happy. Oh, now, now, you don't want to get excited. I do, I do, I do want to get excited. Oh, when should we get married? Oh, now, uh, let me see. Um, I can fit you in 3rd of March, 1921. Oh, no. I'll leave you to make the arrangements. But please, Lottie, can't I have a little bit on account? No, you can't have a bit on account. I'm far too busy with my war work. I've got this poor Norwegian sailor outside who hasn't had a meal for days. I'll just take him upstairs and give him one. Sven! <laughs> See you later. Now, don't forget, 3rd of March, 1921. <laughs> Mein Liebchen, Pitchens, komm. Komm, 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 komm. Wer ist das? Wer ist mein... Mein Pitchens? Mein Pitchens? Mein Pitchens? Wer ist mein Pitchens? Oh, was well, are your Pitchens, Mr. Klanger? Don't worry, I'll take them good care of them. But, yeah, but where are they? They're all tucked up nice and warm. There we are now, look. Lovely, broiled in bacon. Bacon! Bacon! Donner and Blitz and bacon! <laughs> Me? Don't look chewy. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, come, sir. Now, this poor soldier here is having terrible trouble with his, uh, um, uh, what you call it. So I'll just take him upstairs the back way so as not to disturb the general. Very good, madam, yes. Oh, and, uh, you might send up a bottle of champagne and a bowl of curry. Yes, I'll do it right away, madam. <laughs> well, if she's going to muck about with his, what you call it, he'll need more than a bowl of curry. Honest, swarky, melly ponce. I will not have that kind of language in my kitchen, Mr. C. <laughs> Belgian plunger residence. You see, your name is Kaiser, and you're talking from a telephone box in Berlin. You want us to pay for the charges? Just a moment. Klanger, it's for you. I've told you before about taking calls at work. My patrons are lost. Hello, Mr. Hello? Jawohl, Your Majesty. Jawohl, Your Majesty. Right away, Your Majesty. Who is that? It was my dear sainted motor. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. I Hello, Peter. Willie, why aren't you out fighting at the French of Cowardly Custard? Quiet, quiet, Peter. I shall now reveal all. Well, Oh, my God. You're one of those as well. No, no, no. The reason that I'm not out of the front is that I'm working for counterintelligence. Gad! So my son is a man, after all. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. There's no time for that now, Peter. Listen, listen. I have reason to believe that your footman, Clanger, is a German spy. Good. Gracious me, have you any proof? Nothing that would stand up in a court of law, but I just heard him talking to Kaiser Wilhelm. Hark! Then down to the basement. We must apprehend him immediately. <laughs> hey, hey! Oh! Sorry, I thought you were Louis Master Willis. <laughs> Where's Klinger? He's a German spy. Klinger? Never. I just heard him talking to the Kaiser. I knew he was a wrong one. Well, where is he? We must find him. I've just sent him up to Madam's room with a bottle of champagne and a bowl of curry. Ah, well, quick. Arm yourselves, then off to Madam's room. Come on, girl. Take yourself up. Here you go, quick. Stand by to jump him as he comes through the door. Get your weapons ready. We know 
you're in there. Come out, you foreign devil. Is it official? Oh, yes. 